it's the best of the rest. Time to put them to the test. In case your memory is hazy, it's black exploitation, baby. This is Black's History Month, a 29-day celebration of black exploitation films. I think the worst thing about this era of filmmaking is not the films themselves, but the fact that when you dare step outside the norm, sometimes your movie can be buried so deep under the more popular films that it can border on being a lost film. That unfortunate distinction was the fate of a lot of great films from the 70s, and a lot of them don't receive attention until a retrospective or a new Blu-ray or something is released. That was the fate of today's film, because Thomasine and Bushrod is a great film that's hardly remembered or talked about. Don't know why that was, but people missed out. Written by Max Julian and directed by Gordon Parks Jr., Thomasine and Bushrod started life as a western version of the Bonnie and Clyde story, but I hate that comparison because it's so much more than that. Especially since the Bonnie in this story, Thomasine does far more and is far more interesting than the real Bonnie ever was. Thomasine is played by Vanetta McGee. Right out of the gate, she's a compelling character. When we first see her, she's gunning down a man in the middle of nowhere. Then in the next scene, she's pretending to be a humble working woman, just so she could lure in a horny man with the promise of jungle love. Long enough to turn him into the proper authorities. Damn, the balls on this woman. In a change from the norm of these type of films, Thomasine is a bounty hunter and a damn good one at that. Max Julian wanted to write a movie with a strong female lead, and he already had a history of doing that since if you remember, he also wrote Cleopatra Jones. As a matter of fact, when he initially came up with the concept for Cleopatra Jones, he saw Vanetta McGee in the role, since they were in a relationship at the time, that doesn't hurt. But the studio ended up going with Tamara Dobson. As the story goes, Julian was not happy about this and wrote Thomasine and Bushrod out of spite, making McGee the female badass he intended her to be. Thomasine and Bushrod pulls a couple of bait and switches when it comes to the plot. At first you're led to believe that Thomasine is going to spend the movie tracking down J.P. Bushrod, played by Max Julian, especially after she sees how much his reward is, but then it's revealed that they used to be a couple and learning that he's alive, she does track him down, but only to resume their relationship. I don't know Thomasine, seems like he went to great lengths to get rid of your ass, but hey, who can resist Vanetta McGee? even without makeup. Then the movie makes you think it's going to be a revenge mission when we learn that Bushrod is seeking a man named Adolf Smith who apparently killed his sister. We get a short scene with Adolf showing how ruthless he is and I was all in on seeing Bushrod track him down and get justice. But then Bushrod kills him 25 minutes into the movie. Okay, so are we going to get a plot or... It's debatable if either of those fake plots would have been better, but what we get is still pretty good. After killing Adolf, Bushrod is surrounded by the whole town and the same sheriff that rewarded Thomasine for her bounties earlier. Apparently, Bushrod wronged him in some way in the past, and he holds a grudge, so he wants him dead. Thomasine helps him escape, and from here on, our duo is on the run. The sheriff, in a weird turn of events, ends up slowly becoming the villain and it's fun seeing his slow descent into madness as the movie progresses. There's a reason that Thomasine's name comes first in the title, because in a subversion of expectations, Thomasine runs the show. She makes the majority of the decisions, she's smart, and she doesn't hesitate to put in work. Once they are fugitives, she leans real heavy into their outlaw ways, and even decides that they need to take a picture so that their wanted poster can be more up to date. This is a tour de force performance for Vanetta McGee, and I personally think it's her best out of any movie she did during this period, if not ever. It really has to be seen to be appreciated. I also like the fact that Thomasine and Bushrod isn't really a traditional western. It does things to try to modernize the concept, like switching from horses to the brand new invention of automobiles about halfway through. It completely reshapes the film, where doing things on horseback is almost a legal requirement. The image of Thomasine and Bushrod stealing multiple cars and driving off from banks they robbed elevates this movie above your usual western. It also helps that Max Julian and Vanetta McGee were an actual couple because the chemistry is obvious and nothing about their relationship feels forced for the movie. Be on the lookout for a short appearance from Glenn Turman also as Jomo, a friend of the couple. Sure, Thomasine and Bushrod appears to be just a usual bank robbing couple western movie on the surface, but I promise you, it's so much more. Unfortunately, it was destroyed by the critics so badly that it ended up being Max Julian's last movie project. 
writing, acting, or otherwise for over 20 years. It's a shame that it didn't get the attention it deserved when it released. It was one of the rare great films that took the exploitation out of black exploitation. 